Hello Prospective History students, this is Paolo Israel and I am the chairperson of the Department of History at the University of the Western Cape. You are considering studying with us, which I think is a very good idea as we are held to be one of the best history de departments in the country. Uh, our curriculum is centered around African history, so you're going to be learning the history of the continent and of South, South Africa in your undergraduate year and should you pursue uh, postgraduate studies. Um, our department is a research heavy department. Um, all the members have PhDs and all we are all actively engaged in re research. The department produces cutting-edge research in a variety of areas such as political biography, the history of the liberation struggle, visual history, oral history, forensic history, the history of anthropology, activism and archives, experimental historical writing, struggles for land restitution, popular culture, gender and African history, and much more. We have a vibrant graduate culture with many MA and PhD students and this graduate culture translates directly into a culture of tutors nurturing undergraduate students. We have a strong cohort of tutors who are very caring and very engaging and very um, attentive to the need of undergraduate students. Um, we are all a very um, accessible and friendly bunch and we like to mingle with our students as much as that has become difficult in such times of COVID crisis. Um, let, let me not say much more uh, as we're going to have uh, four of my colleagues and three of our students who are going to present on various aspects of the department's undergraduate and postgraduate offering. Welcome. Hello, my name is Bianca van Loon and I'm a lecturer in the History Department at the University of the Western Cape. I'm part of the team that teaches the first year history course and so I've been asked to speak to you a little bit about our course. So in the History First Year course we study, discuss and debate the changes that happened along the eastern and western coastlines of Africa between the 11th and 19th centuries. The central theme of this course is the production of history and so we look at how historians collect evidence from various sources of knowledge, how they interpret and use such evidence to produce history, and how these processes sometimes produce different or conflicting interpretations or arguments. The, the course is aimed at assisting you as the student to identify and understand the different interpretations of the same historical event in helping you to develop the means to assess the value of these conflicting interpretations and most importantly in enabling you to um, develop your own historical argument. So unlike history at high school, we are less interested in how many facts and dates you can memorize and recite and we are more interested in how you learn to develop your own voice and your own historical argument. The main feature of this course is the debates which take place in the lectures and which students love. Um, what happens is two lecturers um, holding different opinions on a topic or question will perform and act out the debate in the lecture room and students will be then invited to join in the debate. The History First Year course is divided into the two semesters. In the first semester we have the History 151 course which is called Historians and Their Arguments societies on the East African coast and in this course we look at the debates around the explanations for shifts that created new places and new peoples um, along the coast of what is today KwaZulu-Natal and Mozambique. We look at the formation of states in southern Africa um, or kingdoms in the early 1800s and we look at the representations of Shaka as one such state or kingdom builder. We look at the debates around the term or the idea of the Mfetane. And then the second term, we move to the what is today the Eastern Cape in South Africa. 
and we look at the cattle killing movement among the Amakosa in the 1850s. And there we look at the contrasting interpretations by different historians around this event. In the second semester, we have the second course, History 152, which is called Historians and the Interpretation of Evidence, Societies on the West African Coast. And there we look at debates on the nature of the pre-colonial African political organization and forms of state. We look at trade systems along the eastern and western coasts of Africa, so along the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And we look at the beginnings of what would become the Atlantic slave trade. We hope that you will join us in History One and we look forward to welcoming you to our course. Hi there, aspiring UWC student. My name is Mishka Lewis. I am a second year master's candidate in the history department as well as a first year tutor. Currently, my research looks at how artists invoke and remember histories of slavery as well as indigeneity in the Cape Town, even in the absence or evasiveness of archival material. My study background has made me realize that history is not the linear study of the past, but it's about confronting and challenging the present as well as reimagining our futures. Being at the UWC History Department has given me an opportunity to think creatively and innovatively about research challenges and issues. The department is vibrant, diverse, you'll meet people from different backgrounds and fields that will definitely expand your thinking. That is why the department is known to produce scholars, unconventional scholars and researchers, solid researchers that you will find across the world. I would say that the UWC History Department is supportive, the staff, students are understanding on student concerns and matters and that is very helpful to ensure that you complete your studies in time. I hope to see you at UWC. All of the best with your academic endeavours. Greetings everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Kony Benson and I want to tell you a little bit about History 2, so the second year of what you would do um, in uh, our history program. In the first semester, the course is called the Atlantic and Indian Ocean Slave Trades and Slave Rebellion in the Cape and the Caribbean. And in the second semester, the course is called Studies in Imperialism and the Making of Modern South Africa. The program for the year really is a combination of engaging with the making of the modern world and the making of modern South Africa. When we talk about what we mean by the modern world and the modern economy that we are currently residing under, how that was made particular point in time and South Africa's place in that. So in the very first semester, we look at debates around the Atlantic slave trade, which was key to the making of the modern world economy. Um, and we then talk about then talk about slave rebellions in the Cape and the Caribbean. So in the first quarter, then we look at the slave trade, the forced migration and mass movement of more than 12 million people that lasted about 400 years. We introduce historical films about the Atlantic slave trade and how historians might assess you and the authenticity of historical dramas and historical documentaries, since that's how most people know anything about the slave trade. The second theme in this first quarter is around slave rebellion in the Cape. We look at two slave rebellions in the Cape colony in the context of the Indian Ocean slave trade. Trade. So we looked at an 1808 and an 1825 uh, slave rebellion that happened in the, in the Cape. Then in the second quarter, we look at slave resistance and slave rebellion in the Caribbean. We look at the mass revolt that became the Haitian Revolution, and we study one of the most famous works of history on the Haitian Revolution, written by C.L.R. James, called The Black Jacobins, to St. Louverture and the San Domingo Revolution. Um, this has been said to be one of the most influential books in the world of writing revolution and black radical thought, as it placed the Haitian Revolution at the, cent the center of world history alongside the French and American revolutions of the 18th century. So we will look at the history of Haiti and the debates that were taking place amongst anti-colonial and pan-Africanist activist thinkers across the Caribbean, the Americas, Europe, and Africa 
in the 1940s that went into the writing of this famous book called Black Jacobins. Um, we also look at debates on putting emancipation into practice with the victory of the slave rebellion, and then what some newer history works have been around the Haitian Revolution. Feminist scholars who are looking at the Haitian Revolution from the perspective of women and African-born slaves involved in the uprising and its aftermath. And in this section, we look at histories from below and people's histories. The final section of this first half of the year reflects on some of the legacies of slave rebellions in the Cape and the Caribbean through the lens of poetry, music, and politics. And here we listen to a lot of reggae music and we look at the ongoing debates that we find. Of course, also there's opportunity to do a kind of walking tour of slave, slave sites in Cape Town and downtown Cape Town. And there's also the opportunity to delve into digital storytelling. Um, and you learn the skills of piecing together a digital story um, where you can think about the traces, the relationships, the imprints, and the le living legacies of slave histories in the present and work on creating a digital story, collecting photographs, creating a narrative, and piecing it together. The second half of the year focuses on the making of modern South Africa, and this is done through looking at the biographies of four particular individuals. Um, this year we are, we are looking at Sol Plaiki, a Tswana African nationalist, writer, political writer, researcher. Uh, we are looking at rebel and gangster Nongoloza Matebula, and we will look at the British missionary David Livingston and the British settler capitalist and politician Cecil John Rhodes. And the idea here is to look at British imperialism in Southern Africa in the early 20th century through these men that were influential at the time. And this part of the course focuses both on biography and on masculine. It also questions the relationship between the individual and social change and historical structures in trying to understand the making of the South Africa that we live in today. Hi, prospective students of UWC. This is Lucano, a master's candidate at the Department of History, also a tutor at the department, tutoring third years in a very exciting and informative program that's focusing on the liberation struggle of Africa. Um, with the first semester focusing on the Great African context and the second semester specifically looking into the South African context. Uh, we hope that you will join, you will join us in the coming years um, for this particular course. But for now, we're also hoping that you join us in our undergrad program starting from first year when you come in, in a department that is very supportive, compassionate towards the students, that ensures that the students are able to achieve their academic excellence, um, that also ensures and enables students to, to, to be critical um, to, 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 to improve their writing skills and their reading skills so that they are able to be observant and analytical students and able to offer something when they come out of the university. Yeah, we hope that you join us and have a good day. So African history is the cornerstone of the third year module in our history department. The third year is divided into two semesters and two courses, namely 331 in the first semester and 332 in the second semester. Now the two courses function independently of one another, but they do resonate with each other thematically. Okay, but the overarching concern in both semesters is Africa's colonial legacy okay, that we live with today. So in the first semester, we move outside of South Africa and we focus on the rest of the continent. And our concern there is trying to understand key themes that pertain to colonial rule in Africa, particularly from the 19th century. And this might sound a bit removed from us historically, but we actually live with the legacies of colonialism. And today we often speak about decolonizing. Um, and so this course is actually trying to understand what is meant by this colonial heritage and this colonial legacy. And it focuses on a couple of key 
themes that have marked the colonial period. But what we do differently is that we actually draw from a range of film sources. Okay, and we look at how filmmakers themselves have tried to tell stories that pertain to Africa's colonial legacy. Okay, so why film exactly? And that's precisely because film as a medium is firstly a mode of storytelling. So one of the things that we learn in first year is that historians don't simply tell a truth that's out there, okay, that exists independently. That historians actually put together stories um, very actively. Now film is one way of reminding us of precisely what historians do, the work that historians do, and that is to actively put together a series of stories and to make them compelling and to make them believable and legitimate. Okay. But apart from that, film is a way of actually conveying the lived experiences of the past. Now, of course, you can read about lived experiences from texts, from books, etc. But film has a particular power in conveying the emotion, the lived experiences, positive and negative. And also in between the complex experiences of, um, of colonialism itself to help us understand that colonial rule was not a black and white issue, quite literally, it was actually, it was actually quite a complex issue. And also the effects of colonialism are themselves very complex. So film helps us to understand this. Okay, And so we cover this course through studying a range of films, five to six films, and all of these films gives a, give us a taste of, of the lived experiences pertaining to colonialism and also independence. Now in the second semester in 332, we move closer to home and we pay particular attention to South Africa's own um, apartheid past. So we focus specifically on the 20th century. So one of the key factors that have actually characterized um, South Africa in the 20th century is rapid urbanization, particularly from the 1940s onwards. Okay. And so one of the focuses of the course is the making of South African cities. Okay. So pretty much every city in South Africa today, particularly the large cities like Cape Town, where we are based, it's very easy to discern and notice how such cities are segregated along racial lines and along, along class lines and sometimes even along ethnic lines. Okay. Now there's a particular history to this. And so we focus in the second semester on certain aspects that actually made up um, a typical South African city that make up the fabric of South African cities even today. And another focus that we pay attention to is how violence was actually integral in making um, that fabric of a South African city today. That those processes were not neat, they were not um, applied uniformly or applied peacefully, that actually they often entailed a whole lot of violence, that apartheid um, as a mode of government was deeply invested in violence. So in the second semester in 332, that's another overarching theme. What does it mean to have lived with this legacy of violence even today? What does it mean to actually try and heal from that violence? Is this possible? So those are just some of the key things um, that we, we actually pay attention to in the third year. Hi, I'm Suleika Sheikh of the History Department at UWC, currently on the verge of completing my Masters in Ethnographic Fiction. So I came across history in my second year at UWC and I was a bit nervous um, to register because my experience of history at school was um, that I found it a bit mundane having to learn a few facts and regurgitate some um, dates at the end of the year in the exams. Um, thankfully, history at UWC is nothing like that. I was met with the most inspiring and enthusiastic lecturers. I was taught my slave heritage in the most engaging and sympathetic way. And suddenly I was transformed into a courtroom where I was the judge having to decide if Hitler was in fact guilty of carrying out the extermination order um, after being presented with evidence. I realized that I'm not just being taught history. I want to start by showing you some of the more recent publications of the colleagues in the Department of History, a group of uh, senior scholars, younger scholars, all working at the cutting edge in areas of history of anthropology, visual history. 
History of Mozambique, Museum and Heritage Studies, Activist Archives, Collaborative History Approaches, Experimental History Writing, Political Biography and National Liberation Movements, um, Urban History, and the courses that we offer fit very well with these areas of expertise. And so you will be taught by active scholars working at the cutting edge who are involved in international partnerships. And so you would come into one of the most exciting departments of history in South Africa and internationally, which has been, which is, which has been chosen by some of the leading uh, young scholars as their place, their preferred place to study. Uh, we offer an honours degree, a master's by coursework and many theses, a master's by thesis and a doctoral degree, a PhD by dissertation, uh, the honours program and the master's by coursework and many theses program we have core courses which emphasise historiography and key concepts in, in history which focus on archive, evidence, voice, and narrative, um, which also uh, try to come to grips with voice, with oral tradition, oral history, music, performance, visual materials, which examine such debates as, um, as whether history is fact or whether in some way fiction. We have exciting an exciting bunch of elective courses, political biography and national liberation movements in South Africa, offers a way to think about the place of biography in resistance struggles, where biography was a, was a form of political mobilization and contestation. We have a long-standing course, a module on visual history, where students uh, not only come to grips with the history of photography and learn to analyze images and how to take photographs with practical sessions, but they also come to grips with how to think of photographs as a form of history, as a genre of history. We have a long standing course as well on the history of anthropology with some focus on the archive of Godfrey and Monica Wilson at the University of Cape Town that is and that, that is interested in the relationship that anthropologists had with their with informants and with their research assistants. We have a wonderful new course on activist archives, struggles in and over history, which is about narration, authorship and archiving as an active process of production that refuses to see archives as a place of consignment. We have a, a long focus in the history department on museum studies. So we have an honors course on museums, heritage and public history and a master's course, advanced issues in museum and heritage studies, which investigates critical heritage how old museums are changing, how new concepts of museum are forming. We have a new course in curatorship, in other words, which is history through visual arrangement of objects and of artworks and of thinking about the care of objects and artworks. We have a wonderful new course in forensic history, one of the new exciting areas of research. Uh, which is concerned not only with the place of the dead body in the, in the formation of the nation, but which is interested in the meaning of the concept of forensic and of questions of memory, absence of transitional justice and the location, exhumation and identification of missing persons. We have a wonderful course on the theory and practice of oral history and an excellent new course on experimental history writing. This is a wonderful time to be a graduate student in history. Mm -hmm.